And welcome, everybody. And there's our fantastic opening music for this big day. And hello, everybody out there. Uh, I see a big crowd in YouTube, and it's really great to be here. And we're excited to be doing the OE Global um, Awards of Excellence for 2023. Uh, I'm Alan Levine, and I am merely your host and trying to press all these buttons. Um, we have a, a little bit of a, a technical issue as technology goes, um, but really we wanted to convene and have a conversation. And of course, this excitement about the winners, but really we want to celebrate everybody who's been part of this. And I can already see that spirit um, in the comments in, in uh, YouTube. So um, while uh, we're hoping that Perrine, uh, our board chair, uh, is able to fix her connections, then this is what happens when we decide to go live. I want to just welcome our, our guest and, and start with um, two people from our review committee. And so hello and welcome Delmar. Hello. Who are you? <laughs> uh, Delmar Larson, I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of California, Davis. I'm the founder and CEO of LibreText. Yeah. Uh, the probably the hardest working man in, in open education, as the saying goes. So thank you for being here and being part of the show, Dalmar. And then uh, zipping down to Austin, Texas. Good morning. Good afternoon, Ooh. Judith. Alan, thank you so much. I am just so honored to be here amongst this auspicious company, including our nominees. And as we're going to find out soon, our winners. I work as an independent consultant, but I'm also immediate past president of the Community College Consortium for OER, which is one of the nodes of Open Education Global. And I'm so thrilled to see the festive atmosphere in the chat, including mentions of Lizzo. And someone said they're here to party. So I'm here with you to celebrate. And thank you so much for having me. And, and of course, I have to welcome my colleague and the person who really like made this program go for so many years and uh, was kind of willing to let me fumble along with it, Marcella Morales, their uh, current uh, co-director of OE Global. Hello, bon, bonjour. I said I'm getting my, my languages mixed Hola, up. Hola. Buenos dias. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. You're, you're so kind. I'm also, as uh, Judith, super excited to be here. Uh, together with Delmar and you to celebrate this new set of winners that we have. And I'm so excited that you uh, have been such uh, an important part of this process this year because your contributions have been just amazing. And I'm always happy this time of the year that we get to celebrate our community and the work uh, that they do all around the world. We never have enough time to review all the awards. We want to invest more time. And this is a time to celebrate today here on live. So thank you very much for having us and leading us through this process of celebration. And just very briefly, before we get to the, the big reveal, uh, one thing that uh, was added this year is there were 173 nominations. And so we kind of um, are able to, um, you know, uh, go through a process with our review committee that Delmar and Judith represent that get down to the short list of 30 that we shared two weeks ago. But uh, we just really thought it was important to honor everybody and every project that was nominated. So uh, this uh, link will be available for everybody to see, and you can check out all the projects that are um, in the mix there. And um, we're welcome back, Perrine, our our board chair. Uh, is your technology working now? Yeah, well, this is the the internet part, and um, hopefully, uh, we're gonna get to the uh, we want to get to the the reveal. So uh, right now, again, um, one of the things that um, that uh, sort of uh, we thought to do is uh, currently uh, we're gonna go to the individual award winners first, the people in open. And so this has been kept under wraps. So I'm going to ask um, uh, someone out there on my in my studio to help like initiate the process to update this list. Of, um, so can uh, Marcella? Can you press the button for us? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I have my super powerful button, and we will be relieving now. The individual winners are. Yes, they are. They are going to be uh, coming up uh, on the screen now. So 
there's a little bit of uh, technical uh, configurations now. that are going here. And uh, just so you know, and we'll be putting this into the chat. And so the first uh, round awards, uh, so the page has been updated um, that we can see. And we're going to be getting the chance to talk about uh, very briefly and just introduce to you all of our individual uh, award winners here. So first, let, let's just say cheers to the whole group. I mean, we always like to start with the people in open because that's really uh, what's important here. And so uh, this has been uh, done now. And so the individual awards are, are linked so you can read all about them. But really we wanna celebrate and congratulate everybody that is here. So um, we're just gonna make sure that we get a chance to um, you know, highlight them and, and talk about them um, in, in sort of, um, you know, very quickly open um, uh, status. So uh, first of all, we're going to recognize uh, Catalyst Award people know very well Jen Rim Wetzler's work uh, through Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, congratulations to Jen Rim. I don't think that anybody in the um, open community doesn't know her and her work. Oh, and we have Kareem back. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> The open community doesn't know her and her work. I'm getting right <laughs> now. Huh. Yeah, I think we're okay. Sorry about that. Hello, Perrine. Hello, everyone. Uh, very happy to be there. I'm very sorry that I have this connection issue. <laughs> we did the test, but uh, obviously it was a tour. So it does change a little bit the connection. Very... Um, I've been uh, recently elected as the president of the board of uh, Open Education Global. I'm very honored to be there. And uh, I must say that there were very many fantastic candidates. I was really um, proud to be reading so many, uh, the portrait of so many people with so many deliverables. And, um, and now I, I prefer, because I just joined, I prefer to let the, the floor to, to the team, to Marcela, Alan. Uh, and uh, so please uh, take back the floor because I just arrived and it's a bit hard to, to cut, uh, cut you uh, while you are speaking. That's fine. So uh, more or less, we're just going to go through uh, the group of individual awards and talk them uh, as a whole. So of course, the Catalyst Award from Jen Rin Wetzler. So everybody in shout out uh, probably knows Jen Rin from work on the Creative Commons certification and the um, open the network uh, of open educators that she runs within uh, Creative Commons. Um, a big shout out for our leadership award to Petrina Law from Open Learn and the Open University. Um, so who has been at this for such a, a long time and has such a great track record for bringing so many great initiatives um, through there. Um, some of them have already been recognized in, um, in previous awards, but also um, just because they really, like their work goes out to the whole world. And then, uh, very excited because I know she's in the room here. Hello, Maha, a longtime colleague, Maha Bali from uh, the uh, American University in Cairo, who um, has done so much as a real living open advocate and educator of, of everything um, in terms of paying attention to students, equity, justice, um, care, uh, faculty development, and um, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a presentation um, led by, by Maha. It's, it's, she really knows how to be in a room. She's such an inspiration, definitely the work that she does. And, um, and, and yes, I've had the opportunity to, to listen to her presentations. And I agree with you, Alan, she's just amazing. And so deserving of this award. So con congratulations, Maha. Fantastic. And um, kind of like breaking some, some new ground, uh, we had a, a nomination that was actually three in one for the student awards. And we really want to recognize um, the students in open education. So Henry Agno, Ethan Turner, and Matt Barkovic um, have been part of LibreText. And um, Delmar was, you know, giving me some background before, but like this history of having students be part of uh, it's it's open pedagogy from the beginning for LibreText, right? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, these students were uh, <clears throat> part of a team of thousands of students that have contributed to our project, but these three students in particular were critical in terms of moving uh, us from the backwaters of a wiki on our learning management system into something significantly greater. So they are, uh, and they've taught me a lot about technology, <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> Fantastic. And so uh, and then um, because, uh, you know, students we really like to recognize in, in the program, um, uh, we want to uh, give a special recognition too to Yasser Timer Artef, who's um, also a student at the American University of Cairo. And really his openness is really in being a, an advocate um, as first a student and um, for uh, paying attention to uh, to the um, to the challenges and things that people with certain disabilities need. And he's become it, done it in such a caring way in open spaces uh, from the nomination that we got, but also he's kind of become, um, and maybe Maha will say more in the chat, just he became a participant in the Equity Unbound uh, MyFest initiative um, and really became a leader within the program. And this is really what we want to see happen. So. Um, Again, we really wanted to, um, there's a decision uh, by the committee to, um, to recognize students out of this whole mix. All right, so let's, let's give a round for our individuals. Um, you'll be getting more emails from us with certificates and things like this. Um, individuals will also get, if you see on screen, that little yellow icon, um, the individual award winners get a 3D printed uh, trophy that's done for us by our colleagues at the Fab Lab Qatar in Costa Rica at, at the um, Distance Education University there. We're trying to set up a, a, a tour with them uh, tomorrow so you can see how it's done, but these prizes are a unique part of, of the process. And so now we're going to go on and um, I'm gonna ask um, uh, my colleague uh, Judith to be um, the magic button presser uh, to reveal the open assets awards. So um, we've got the um, we got the um, system working here, and hopefully the open assets um, will now be revealing the, the winners that we're going to show to you now. Um, and yes, I can see that the uh, technology, at least on that end, has been working. They are loaded if you will. And um, as Alan tries to make sure he gets uh, the link into the chat for you to be able to see, uh, meet the winners of the Open Assets Awards. Um, this is pretty exciting for us too, uh, because assets are what we all about. Um, and that um, these are certain projects that we want to record that have been nominated um, as uh, in the four categories. So uh, very first one, I was so glad to see this one come in because Story Weaver has been um, a, a favorite project of mine for a long time and, and often not as um, well uh, known um, because it's um, really aimed at focusing on making children's stories um, available openly um, through an amazing resource of, of thousands of storybooks in languages that most people have never really come across before, but very important mother tongue languages. So um, let's hear it for Story Weaver. Has anybody uh, taken a chance to look at this one yet? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, I think that uh, one of the things that that resonated heavily with me is the detail in the curation process of these stories. I think that's just amazing and something that is a, a wonderful example of how we can reuse and adapt OER and make something wonderful from the, that basis. So I just love that project and have been following for a while as well. So I'm super excited that they have this award now and we are able to recognize their wonderful work. All right. and. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to the uh, Open Infrastructure Award, um, another amazing resource for what it offers and, and also being completely open, um, Openverse, uh, the successor to the Creative Commons. I, I still remember the very first Creative Commons search where you had to type, you know, send your search to very different uh, websites. And this is really a completely new generation uh, of material. So I certainly hope 
Openverse is um, one of the resources that people use very often. I know I do. Um, but really, it enables you to find a openly licensed Creative Commons license audio and images and soon other sorts of media um, where you're not really guessing to understand what the license is because it's Creative Commons, but um, really effective because it provides cut and paste attribution. Yeah, Alan, it's, it's really become my go-to for images, for audio. And like you said, the attribution feature is so easy and you can, you know, you can search by the licenses. They just make it so user-friendly and so easy that you really have no excuse not to use openly licensed images and audio. Yeah. And uh, thanks everybody. It's so great to see so much, so many comments in here and, um, uh, you know, we'll say it often, but really, I mean, everything, everything that everybody's doing, we, we want to, to recognize through this program. And so now for in terms of open reuse remix adaptation, um, uh, a project uh, from Kingsborough Community College, part of the, the CUNY system, um, is this course that's kind of used in, in a unique way. Um, it's part of a college now uh, program where high school students um, uh, get credit, dual credit for uh, an ecology experience um, in this course on humanities. Um, but of course, they don't have access to the kind of resources that college students do. And so this open book, which is remixed from many other sources, is, is a beautiful example of what this category is about. Alan, I have to speak to this one really quickly because my background is in the arts and humanities. And I have never seen the humanities seem so exciting and vital. I mean, there's, uh, there is a chapter on the Mexican mural movement. There's a chapter that combines a look at Ma Rainey, Stonewall, AIDS activism, all of these are significant catalysts for social change. And it also focuses on, on rock and roll and the roots in African-American culture for rock and roll. So it, I can't say enough about how exciting I find this resource. There's so much to use here and so much to build on as well. Yeah, and they, they even get to punk rock, which is actually, <laughs> <laughs> for us it's new, but for, for a new generation, that's already history. But uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful use of media in this resource. And then now for the significant impact OER, um, which is always a difficult uh, one to choose, um, is this wonderful project from um, Trent University in collaboration um, with the um, uh, Canadian Observatory on Homelessness. And um, really it's, it's quite remarkable to, to see that what they've done is to do this collaboratively and build in a lot of stories from people who have experienced homelessness and work with it now. Um, but it's so rich with their case examples um, and their, their, uh, their stories. And so it's a significant uh, project that Trent University has done. Um, it even includes a podcast and a, and a video series that can be used outside of it. Alan, it also has a focus on indigenous homelessness and it's, I, you know, I, I think how they argue it is how it perpetuates colonizing practices. Very eye-opening, poignant, sometimes shocking, groundbreaking work. Fantastic. And uh, of course, this is, um, uh, again, the assets, the things that we create are definitely a significant part of uh, open education and the work that we've been recognizing for years. Um, there were so many good um, projects this year. Um, it was a really, I'm sure for our committee, a, a difficult process to come up with, with just one. So all of them, and, and we refer you to the short list of um, previous, uh, of the short list of nominations um, to see all the great work that's been done uh, in creating open assets. How are we doing out there? I think we're ready for the next category, um, which is the open practices. And so uh, this, I believe, is already published. And we're, we're checking. Yes. And so these are already listed on the URL that was sent in the chat. They're live. Uh, all of these are in our um, Hall of Fame and alive on the awards website. So uh, we want to bring on first uh, for the collaboration project. Um, uh, something that uh, we had a chance to talk to recently here on, on OEG Live, the National Teaching Repository, um, which, which is such a fascinating approach for, uh, yes, repositories have come and gone for a long time, but their whole idea is to build it in a way that the people who share are able to get 
um, academic recognition by getting a, a DOI for all these things. All the materials are creative license, and it really helps both sides of the equation in terms of supporting um, faculty who are creating this material um, and getting some uh, professional stature, but also by being a community. And um, it's it's like, and it's ironic because when we learned is that um, it's a national, you know, it started in uh, the UK, but it's actually gone quite a bit farther. So let's hear it uh, to Don Irving Bell and the rest of the team that were part of that. It's so great to uh, be able to recognize this for open collaboration. All right, what is next coming on? Uh, Oh God, I just love this this one that uh, Buds Branches and Bark, uh, which is an open textbook out of the British uh, Columbia Institute of Technology, uh, which is just a great story uh, behind it. But definitely um, to uh, live out the idea of open pedagogy um, and, and the fact that it was created out of this understanding that identifying um, plants up in the area of British Columbia at the time most classes happen um, is in the winter when you don't have all the nice leaves and flowers to identify plants. And so the idea was to help uh, create this fantastic living resource of plant identification, um, which was done in so many ways as open pedagogy um, in terms of um, students being out there to, to capture the images um, but also uh, design and, and students who participated in creating all the materials. It's really a one of, it's really a beautiful resource. You know, as a climate activist, Al Alan, I consider this to be such an exciting resource because we just, you know, if, if, if young people can just I understand and identify the world around them, they're going to feel more invested in keeping it alive, sustainable and renewable. So I just find this to be a very exciting resource. And uh, for open policy, um, another amazing project from uh, the state of Washington, from their uh, organization of technical and community colleges, uh, doing what many uh, organizations try to do at institution level is come up with a system to identify um, courses that use OER um, and uh, labeling them. So when students sign up for a course that they know this in, in advance, um, the um, most significant thing is that um, this was really created and developed with a huge amount of student support. Um, and so definitely worthy of the policy award. And I got to jump in here, Alan, because I'm a former policy analyst for a state higher education agency in the United States. And let me tell you, policy is not considered exciting or sexy, but they make policy so accessible in this resource. And I think it's probably not only helpful and useful for Washington and for the state of Washington, community colleges and other institutions in Washington, but across the country and even beyond, I would argue. So user friendly, so well done. Uh, thank you, Judith. And so definitely um, one that we were really honored to award this year. Um, at Open Research, uh, we were excited that uh, this project that came again from um, some folks at the CUNY system, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Stacy Katz and Jennifer Van Allen, who were the editors of this um, special journal um, on multicultural education um, that really um, focused on the practice of, of open pedagogy, especially with attention to social justice and, and equity. And so it's this research uh, journal publication um, that um, came out in uh, uh, this Emerald Insight Journal. Um, I believe the original uh, they worked with, um, it was uh, funded by the Hewlett Foundation uh, to, for all the research to be open, of course, and they've recently migrated it um, to the Manifold platform um, which itself won an o Open Education Award a few years ago, um, which really enhanced the abilities to, to use this as a resource. Mm -hmm. I think it's such, a, such an important element, the multicultural uh, education aspect of this research, and, and it resonates so much with the work that we do at OE Global that I, I just I was fascinated to see what they have been working on. Wonderful resource. Excellent. So... Now we get on to the third category. And uh, these, um, this is your turn, Marcella, to press the button. Yes. 
Let me get, yes, my turn to do them. This is the special category award. So here we are announcing them now. Yeah, and uh, are we? just, just uh, confirming from uh, the, uh, yes, I, I can see I'm getting a positive signal on the dashboard here and that the winners in the special awards category um, are now available for everyone to see. And we will uh, bring them on stage. But uh, I want to add that, you know, this whole idea of having special awards was to, you know, make the process dynamic to different um, trends and, and issues that come up. And so, um, I don't know, maybe there'll be one next year on artificial intelligence. I don't know. But um, the ones uh, that, again, were categories uh, this year, and there was a huge pool of of uh, nominations in the diversity, equity, and, and inclusion award category um, that all of them, you know, wish were up here on the screen, but they're all really important. And so um, this open um, textbook that was published out of Southern Queensland University um, really spoke to a lot about um, elevating, uh, again, the idea of being able to showcase um, practice and, and the very useful uh, things and resources and strategies that will help um, teachers anywhere uh, sort of achieve much more um, DEI or IDEI um, in their teaching and their open educational resource work. Um, so an incredible resource. Yeah, I agree, Alan. I think that uh, there is a common understanding of the importance of inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility in all our learning environments. But usually the question comes on the how, how can I incorporate these elements in my context? And this is a beautiful resource uh, addressing some of those uh, questions or queries in general. So it's, I agree with you. And uh, congratulations to Nikki Anderson for editing this beautiful resource. Yes, fantastic. Um, and again, um, open resilience is, is a category that we, uh, unfortunately has to come into play uh, again. Um, and so uh, the response of OER for Ukrainians uh, goes out to our colleagues at, at Open Learn, um, who, um, as they did before in sort of uh, being responsive to the needs of the COVID pandemic, um, did the same thing for the needs for everyone displaced and uh, put into stress by the invasion of the Ukraine. And so um, they, typically, as the leadership of Petrina Law already recognized, were able to harness their energy and all their resources within OpenLearn um, first to identify um, through the analytics of their, uh, of their user base to understand where people are, are needing um, resources from the Ukraine and also for Ukrainian um, citizens who are um, outside of their country now, but um, really to identify the kind of content that was most needed to develop and put together into um, a, a very important resource. Um, but then they took it to the next level and uh, translated it and developed new resources in Ukrainian language. Mm -hmm. Alan, this to me is such a beautiful example of why we do what we do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Judith. I think uh, that it's a wonderful example of cooperation and support through OER. And the fact that they have been able to date reach more than 5,000 people with these resources and how they found a way to adapt it uh, to make them available to this community is just amazing. And the, the work is ongoing. They're, they're continually <laughs> refining this. Um, and um, what they're really, again, what they're paying attention to is um, uh, where the people are who need this and what the, their needs are. And that's, that's what OER should be about. And now we kind of came up with a new category uh, with the idea of a wild card, because sometimes you say like, my project doesn't necessarily fit in any of these categories, or this one is just so stand out. And again, there were um, many great submissions um, into this category um, and uh, really proud to see um, the We Like Sharing photo competition, which is uh, we've seen has been part it's been coincided with Open Education Week the last couple of years. And so, um, you know, what um, Bea de los Arcos and colleagues at TU Delft do is they put out a call um, for students, faculty, um, and, and family members of TU Delft 
um, to share uh, photos that demonstrate visually what open means to them. And, um, and the whole premise is to make it so those photos are Creative Commons licensed and put into a public place where they're available. Um, so people are able to experience openness um, through something uh, as simple as, you know, well, it's not as simple, but to make a beautiful photograph. Um, and so it's just such a beautiful model that is replicable uh, in many places to, that would uh, work for almost anybody. Alan, I just love, love, loved this one. It was kind, it's kind of, as you, as I experienced it, it was kind of a, I'm living vicariously through you and getting to see bits and pieces of your lives. Uh, many of which through this side, I thought, boy, my life is not nearly as exciting as some other people's. But it was also a glimpse into culture of that area of those who contributed to this resource. And like you said, so you, it could be so easily duplicated in other contexts and I think have such impact. Right. Well, uh, thanks for bearing with us for the big reveal of, of the awards. Again, we want to celebrate the winners, um, everybody else who was part of this, the shortlist. And so uh, I really encourage you to take time uh, to spend time. The theme this year has sort of been this explore um, to sort of uh, examine and uh, get inspired by ideas and projects that um, not only the winners, but have been nominated and were on the shortlist. And it's, it's just such an amazing uh, pool of, of people and projects. And uh, really, I think um, what I hope we can do is sort of uh, make this even a broader program next year, just to have ongoing recognition um, in the work that we do. Absolutely. As we were saying initially, it's, it's so difficult uh, to choose uh, because there's so many projects and initiatives that have been uh, presented that it's a very difficult work uh, I would also like to, to thank the committee that helped us during this process, doing this amazing work. We've had a, a committee of 20 people that helped us through the process. And I want to say thank you because we know it was not an easy task. Um, and this, congratulations to everyone. It's such an exciting time of the year for us to be able to recognize and celebrate the work that is happening all around the world. So big congratulations to everyone and a big thank you to Alan for leading us yeah. through the process. Thank you very much, Alan and Marcela. I just wanted to add a word because I really love the reading the project and seeing everything what happened. And maybe some of you know that I have um, funded uh, with many other francophones, the network Open Education Global Francophone. And we, we get inspired from your awards too. And I hope this will put some visibility of what we are doing uh, in, in the francophone countries or by francophone people and also in translation, because, I mean, the awards themselves, uh, and you, you, when we prepared this, we, we said this, there are a wealth. This is where we see our common wealth <laughs> and how we, we put together from all around the world uh, many resources, and they are more visible often in the Anglophone world because people know better how to you know, uh, make them visible. And typically this is this award and this open recognition process that is really great. And I, I hope we will be able to launch this very soon um, in, the, in, the, in the Francophone online conference that we, we would like to organize uh, for Open Education Week. Just to tell you, we have everything in process, our monthly webinars, and this is what you did um, is very inspiring <laughs> also for other part of, of the world and other people. So thank you very much. You are contributing to something greater than we small people. <laughs> thank you very much to all. And uh, a big thank you uh, again, as Marcel said, to our review committee um, who did an incredible amount of work. Um, and the OE Global Board, um, who again uh, provides uh, a key amount of, of oversight and selection process. Um, there's a lot of people uh, who are part of this machine, uh, mostly thanks to the 173 people who uh, stepped forward and, and nominated. Um, and so uh, that was really exciting to see the range of, of uh, ideas, people and project that were nominated by the community. Yeah, definitely. And we hope to see many of you in Canada, in Edmonton, next month. 
<laughs> very much. And so, uh, and, and again, thank you so many people for, for tuning into this. Um, we just wanted to make a little bit of, of excitement and to sort of share um, in this moment together. Thank you for uh, coming into YouTube and uh, being part of this celebration with us. Congratulations to all. And we will go out now with some music again. Thank you. Bye.